Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. It's the summer series, the original summer series, and tonight it's episode five. It's a little freestyle Friday with Soph. That would be me. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. Good evening, boys and girls. No matter where in the world you might be, welcome to another live edition of the Highbury Squad. I know I have you off kilter schedule wise. Uh, the summer is a little like, I don't know, free flow. Maybe we'll do a show one day. Maybe we won't. Depends on who we can bring on as well. Here we are. I salute you, squaddies, at ease, every single one of you. I hope you're well. hope you've had a good week. Um, the Summer Series is back, and I thought we could do a little bit of a Freestyle Friday. Let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Surely you heard Vesper and her bone loud and clear back there. Is it too loud? Is it too soft? For all you lovers out there in the dark, let me know the volume that you want. And we can make it happen on this fine Friday. Uh, hey, Trev. Um, hey, Mark. Hey, Take That. Hey, Liz. Hello to all the squaddies in the house. Yes, I'm solo. I don't mind doing solo. The Highbury Squad Letterman jacket for next season. You can now see some of our merch on the YouTube uh, description page, which is pretty cool. Good evening to all you lovers out there in the dark on this fine Friday. Missing football? Are you missing football? Yeah, thanks. My mic is pretty good. Uh, are you missing football yet, everyone? Tell me, honestly. Oh, now you're just abusing Sunny Crete. I love Crete. Had some of the best summers of my life in Crete. A uh, family friend owned a hotel near Heraklion, and we had some incredible times. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, Liz, just so you know, here in our house, we always leave an extra little bit of Christmas out after every Christmas to remind us that in the dark days and the blue days, that Every day can be like Christmas if you want it to be. Amazing that you bring that up. We have a little uh, tele... Te bring it over here, Tony. My production team are always on deck. This way. Why, thank you. I'm sure I'm going to be done for copyright issues on YouTube, but it's worth every single moment for you to see my television Christmas, which helps me during my dark days and challenging times in this universe. And you could just do this real quick and switch it off and then it switches on. Tell me an Arsenal show that gives you that magic. Tell me and I'll watch it. Humbug, says Trek. <laughs> no, it's, we have Christmas in July here. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's real. It happens. It's Christmas in July. Arsenal on the box. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, I thought you'd enjoy that. Love it too. Very cool. I, I guess to a nighttime show, I'll bring it out and show it to you guys because you can see all the little people in the village. It's like a scene from Dr. Zeus, How the, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. It's really kind of epic. Um, speaking of How the Grinch Stole Christmas, how does the Grinch steal the transfer market? Mm, well, we'll get onto that and a lot more. It's the Summer Series Episode 5. I thought that we'd do something a bit unique tonight. Let's get, just get together and talk what's happening in your lives. 
It's so long to go to try to do it. <laughs> what? We signed someone. We did. We did. And we'll get to that in just a second. Um, here's our resident Leicester fan. Hey, hello, Soph. We have some easy games at the start of the season. Brentford, Arsenal and Southampton should be a piece of cake. Where'd you finish this season, Sidan? Sit down. Sit down. Oh, sit down. Sit down, sit down. Okay. Uh, I love lobster. I was actually going to order a lobster roll for lunch today. Yes. I like mine with the, the oil and butter, not with the mayonnaise, though. I love a lobster roll. I love a lobster bisque. Lobster, lobster, lobster. Give me lobster. This is what the summer's all about. Tell me your favorite shellfish, your fish, your favorite summer sandwich or food. Let's roll with it. We're also going to talk football, of course. Yeah, lay off that 420, 100%. Good evening, Rich. How's life for you? Um, let's see what's going on here. Yes, love Jess. In fact, here's one I made earlier. Uh, you can listen to myself and Jess this coming season. We're doing a joint show together. It's kicking it with Jess and Soph or Soph and Jess. Uh, depending on whose channel we're broadcasting that week, we'll do two shows a month. And the two of us are spitting facts and talking the Arsenal. Uh, we did a pilot episode. You can find it on Jess's channel. And this will continue throughout next season. Two very strong and opinionated Arsenal women talking football. I think there's room for folks like us. I hope you come and hang out and enjoy. Right. Um, let's see. What's happening? We signed someone. So here's the scoop. Uh, I wanted to come on today to tell you about a couple of things. Number one, that this is the original summer series show of any Arsenal show, just in case anyone was wondering. Um, and we are here to talk about football, but as you know, we love to do a bit of pop, pop culture and fun stuff. It is the summer after all. There's a long, long, long way to go in the transfer market until, you know, things are decided. It's going to be a long, long slog. But we have done some bits early on. And despite the fact that some fans were had and had a little trepidation about this, you know, we're in the market and we're making stuff happen. Here's what I want to say, which I think is really important. Chilean sea bass on a bed of spinach, Lone Star. Now we're talking. I don't want to know about that, Utabi. Hi, Sophie. There is something special happening at Arsenal over 300 mil at this rate. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I hear you. My favorite Greek food. Good one. Moussaka. And Kobebia, otherwise known in the normal world as Dolmades. But I absolutely love a Moussaka and Dolmades with a little bit, uh, little bit of Zanzigi on the side. Gold. You also can't be a Greek Sovlagi, to be honest with you. Trevor, how can we make you a fish lover? Everyone's got to love fish. White wine, absolutely. White wine all the time. A little Pinot Grigio, if I may say so myself. Scallops, shrimp. Lobster is too expensive in the UK. We have elect ele electricity bills and petrol to pay for. Saying we do too. Tammy hates fish. Our chief like officer hates fish. What's that about? All right. So um, I do have a very special video that's coming from Kevin Hatchard, who is one of our favorites here on the show. He is a European football expert and Kevin knows pretty much everything about any player that plays on the planet in Europe and their ins and outs. Um, Kevin is someone who follows the Portuguese League, uh, La Liga, Liga, Bundesliga, Serie A, uh, the Dutch League. I mean, he knows so much and has a, a breadth and depth 
about these players, especially the players that may be on the radar for top teams in Europe. So Kevin is very kindly putting together a video for us on, I was going to put up a picture of Fabio, but the Fabio that maybe some of the chicks knew from the 90s with a long mane, blonde hair. Yeah, I thought that'd be cheesy, so I opted out of that. But uh, Kevin is putting together a video for us on um, Fabio Vieira and is talking about his attributes, his strengths, why he thinks he's going to fit in at the Arsenal. Because listen, I'm not going to sit here and profess to know I'm an expert on Fabio Vieira. I know a lot about football. I've seen and watched many leagues, many games over the last year. I've seen him play. I thought he was a good player. But can we also stop for a minute to talk about this? So every single day there's different shows and there's different um, podcasts that come out and they talk a lot about the transfer market, et cetera. Um, I have a tremendous am uh, amount of respect for Tom Canton. As you guys know, he does a great job um, digging into what the true story is, does his analysis on the players, talks to experts all around. Uh, Harry does the same. You know, there's a lot. I love uh, uh, Tim Stillman and what he does in terms of the women's side and how he educates us and helps us understand the fundamentals of that arena in the sport. And as much as I know about a lot of players, I'm not an expert on Vieira. I'm an expert on the old Vieira, but I'm not an expert on the new Vieira. So what I love is that all of a sudden, so many Arsenal people are experts on Fabio Vieira. Let's be honest. Is he not the surprise first announcement signing? Forget Makinios. That was billed a little while ago. But is he not a surprise signing? No one's sitting here saying, I knew, I thought he was on the radar. Maybe he was on people's lists, but a little bit like Callum Chambers when he left Arsenal, that was a bit of a shocker and no one saw that coming at that time. This signing is definitely a surprise considering we've been talking about Tielemans and Jesus and Hickey and other players during this period. So um, what I like about it is the unknown, even though there is a known. And by saying the known, I would just share with you what some of my um, mates over at ESPN had written. We've signed a deal to sign FC Porto attacking midfielder Fabio Vieira for 35 million euros with a further 5 million possible in performance-related add-ons. But what kind of player are we getting, as the ESPN group ask? He's 22 years old. He's played 39 games across all competitions last season, registering seven goals, 16 assists. I'm not going to go crazy and say, are those all numbers? <laughs> While in his career for the Portuguese club, he had 10 goals, 18 assists from 76 games. He's come through the youth academy over there. He made his first team debut in 2020. He's yet to make his debut for the national team at, higher level, but he has been captain of the under-21 side and has 13 goals in 20 games since making his debut in 2019. He was named in the team of the tournament uh, for the Portugal under-19s, uh, finished second to Spain in the 2019 UEFA European under-19 championship. Uh, he also starred in the 2021 UEFA European under-21 championship, picking up the award for best player as Portugal finished runners up, runners up to Germany. Right, let's get some stats on him, shall we? Let's take a break. Let's see what you guys are saying. Okay, looks good technically. Yeah, he does. So you, what are you saying? You want Rafinha on one side and this guy on the other side? What's going to happen to Saka? What's going to happen to ESR? What's going to happen to Martinelli? We need a strong squad. We need depth. There's no doubt about that. A hundred percent. Um, I think once again, have we invested in potential versus reality and actuality? 
right? Magic Mike, good evening. Good to have you in the house. Um, he's five foot seven, which is pretty much the height for any <laughs> Arsenal player. Uh, they say he lacks physical size to dominate the midfield, um, like his namesake, Patrick Vieira. But come on, who can dominate the field like Vieira? Eh. So we got Rambo 2.0 now in Aaron Ramsdale in goal, following on from Aaron Ramsey. And now we have Vieira 2.0, who is going to be compared to now Patrick Vieira. Please, are we really doing this? Just because someone's name, okay. Rambo 2.0, I've coined as well, so I'll leave that one at that. But just because his name's Vieira, are we going to copy copy him, compare him to Patrick Vieira? Surely we're not going to do that, right? We're talking about a legend of the game. I hate this, the next Messi, the next Ronaldo, the next Van Persie, the next Rooney, the next Beckham, the next, 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 next. If I had a nickel for every time said he's the next X. I'd be a millionaire laying on a beach sipping Corona lights just like in the commercial. So I hope that we don't do that because clearly their physicality is different, their talent pool is different, and we just shouldn't be doing that. Exactly. Nothing like Patrick Vieira. <laughs> Mike, you nerd. Ah, oh, I love it. Absolutely brilliant. Um carry on. He's played in a number of positions, including a 10 and an 8. And as a second striker, he tends to play centrally behind the striker um, or cuts in from the right onto his stronger left foot. You can check the heat map out on the ESPN article I've shared in the description of the show. By the numbers, Vieira has impressed um, with his stats among his FC Porto um, peers this season, playing 27 of the club's 34 league games on the way to winning a second successive title and the Portuguese Cup. He's had 1,082 touches, which is 10th in the Portuguese league. Okay. Pass accuracy, 82.9%, which is 16th. Blimey, I'm kind of wishing I wasn't reading out these stats. Chances created, 34, which is fifth. Shots, 46, which is sixth. Tackle accuracy, 48.3%, which is sixth. Expected goals, 3.68, which is sixth. And expected assists, 5.0, which is third. His strengths, according to this article, he has rapid turns and a change of pace mixed with a low center of gravity making the attacking midfielder a headache for opponents and an entertainer for the fans. I've read this before. I've seen the shirt. You know. Anyway, uh, when in form, he can advance forward, um, going past defenders in a dangerous position in the final third. His left foot is excellent while he hits a powerful shot. He's also sensitive enough to thread well-weighted passes to runners behind the defensive line. He was involved in 23% of Porto's goals in the Portuguese league last season. So he's an attacking threat with an eye for a key pass. How can he improve? They say that he can be selfish and prone to taking on an opponent too many times. Papa, can you hear me? Heard that before. As with other talents who thrive on their technical ability, he has to improve his defensive discipline. There's also a need to provide a more consistent presence in the entire 90 minutes. A consistent presence in the entire 90 minutes. That's an issue for Arsenal Football Club, period. This is where I think we fail and win as a team. Mental impotence, mental weakness. Staying in the game for 90 minutes, we need players to who come in who are experienced. Listen, I like this signing. I like the ambition of the signing. But I want more experienced players. I want to get excited about him, but I'm not going to sit here and say, be excited. You know, he's played in the Portuguese league. He's done bits. Can he be Santi? Maybe. You know, does he sound a little bit like Santi? I think Mikel may have identified his old teammate and realized this is the plug that we've never replaced. Um. But can I sit here and profess to you that he's the answer? And no, I can't. 
But Kevin Hatchard will, and he'll be on the show next week. And he, we're going to talk about him in depth. And he's going to tell us his strengths, his weaknesses, the whys we should be excited. And let's be honest, with all the rumors that were out there, you show me one tweet from anyone in the Arsenal universe that had us linked to this guy and signing this guy. So here's what I say about that. What other secrets do Arsenal Football Club have? What other surprise signings are down the road? There's something I like about the fact that this was kept so on the QT. Boom, it came out and a lot of people were shocked and surprised about it, you know? Um, and I like that. We're never going to know until he wears the shirt and plays and kicks a ball. You know, remember last season when people poo-pooed the signing of Tommy Asu and Ben White and Aaron Ramsdale and, of course, Nuno and Sambi as well, which, you know, Nuno and Sambi, I think, were set up to fail in many ways as well as the fact that the glaring light and the spotlight once it hit them was a little bit more than they could handle. However, being set up as a low man wolf in midfield with Sambi and, you know, the wingman that you probably wanted to help you in that game has shifted to left back. Nuno, who started off really well in the early stages and a lot of Arsenal fans were like, well, here's the answer. We just don't know. We just don't know. So this kid is another kid who we've paid quite a bit of money for and he comes with a lot of expectation. And what I like about it is that our club just announced it from nowhere, which leads me to believe Mr. Bungle, the other stuff can be cooking. And why shouldn't it be cooking? Yeah. Secret transfer discussions are good because it stops them getting hijacked by other clubs. We kept this one quiet. Is he going to end up being one of those signings for the Arsenal? Sky was falling earlier this week. Because Tottenham signed Perisic, Basuma, goalkeeper. When I was on Harry's show with Dan and Tom earlier this week, I wasn't poo-pooing our non-transfer activity. I was poo-pooing the idea of, are the owners going to get behind the manager and take us to that next level, having secured really good players like Ramsdale, and Tommy Yasu like last season, and Ben White, bringing Saliba back. You add a Tielemans, a Gabriel Jesus, a Vieira to this, and maybe even a Hickey. Hell, I'll give you a Hickey for that. That's a pretty good transfer window, isn't it? So we will talk more about uh, Vieira next week with um, the great Kevin Hatchard, who will come on and talk to us a little bit about him. I think Kevin will also touch on Jesus. Uh, Kevin has seen a lot of hickey uh, in Syria as well. So we'll be talking to Kevin about that too. I like to talk to experts who can put us in a position and a place where they've seen the player play. I watch a lot of football people and I can tell you a lot about different things. But I'm not going to sit here and profess to be a Fabio Ruiz. Uh, Fabio, what? Sorry, did I just say that out loud? Ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> Fabio Vieira expert. Yeah. So, you know, also the surprise factor is something that I love. Right. There's 200 of you in live chat. Hit the like button. We're just here for a little while just to hang out and talk. I didn't want to do like a mega show. I just came on here to really just catch up and talk to you about a couple of things. Great signing. We're not going to know until he wears the shirt. He's not coming at that price tag to just sit and be a spectator. He just hasn't, you know, and clearly the hierarchy have identified or Mikel Arteta, uh, Mikel Arteta has identified a player that he needs, that he feels can fill some plugs and holes. We're going to have more football next season, everybody. So maybe the players that we've fallen in love with and we've been used to seeing in the starting 11 aren't going to start all the time. We're going to have the FA Cup. We're going to have the League Cup. We're going to have Europa League and we're going to have the Premier League. And we thought we ran out of gas this season. Well, get ready, people. 
Gas prices are going through the roof. Transfer prices are going through the roof. But somehow we're going to need to bring it all together and get those boys running. And they're going to need to run in different competitions at different times when the manager is asking them to do that. So, you know, it's a, going to be a different season. And a different season that could make us see a different side to this team. They're either going to rise to the occasion and embrace the moment or, you know, they're going to struggle at first. For example, is it a coinky dink that our first game of the season is under the bright lights of Friday night against Patrick Vieira and Crystal Palace? My goodness, people love a narrative, don't they? Here we go, ex-Arsenal legend and invincible captain comes to taunt Arsenal again in South London. Can't make some of this stuff up, can you? But it's going to be a challenge. Are we ready? Are we ready for that? Are we going to give them payback? Are we going to have a team who's prepared first day of the season the reason why some Arsenal fans were losing their minds about the transfer window and things happening early is not because they don't have total faith that we'll sign players. It's having players in before the tour starts, before they come here to the United States, before the season begins. You know, you've got a young squad and let's stop calling them too young, right? Ben White is a man. Tommy Asu is a man. Tierney's a man. Saka, Martinelli, and Emil Smith Rowe are and have become men. There's no excuse for this anymore. The youngest team in the Premier League. That was good for last season. It's not going to be good for next season. So we have to find a way to start strong. Now, last season, we didn't. The sky was falling three games in. No wins, no goals, zero, zero, zero. And if you look at our first few games, Crystal Palace away is never easy. We were scored there last season. We're going to have Leicester City. Who knows if they'll strengthen, um, but we have them at home. They've given us a pickle over the years, but generally we've overcome them, especially at King Power. At home, maybe that bad taste of the Vardy last-minute goal still lives in our minds. Bournemouth are going to be trying to get point early on the board because they're going to be looking at pure survival. You know, we've got Fulham, who we've played well against in the past, and Aston Villa, who may strengthen under Gerrard or not. We'll see. But young players like this coming in, does he get a shot right away? You know, does he start right away? Is this going to happen? If it does, I think we'd all welcome it. I think that's incredible. The fact that these two are going to be battling out for a place and let's not kid ourselves. Arteta sees everything as a competition. Gabriel may be the superior of the three right now, but, you know, nothing's given at the Arsenal. You don't just get your spot. You have to earn your spot. And I think that's going to create fantastic competition for everybody. So things are going to start shaping up. I would like them to shape up a little bit before the tour starts. You know, let's see. Bill Saliba as the comeback kid. Morning from freezing cold railway, railway station in Melbourne, Australia. Good, throw, throw, throw. It's not that time of year to throw another shrimp on the barbie. But let me tell you something, I'll do that for you later. Dave, you keep warm. Have yourself a nice Castle Main 4X. Was that bad? Just tell me. It's okay. I can handle it. Um, Neil feels he'll be benched in favor of Arteta's favorite Xhaka. Well, here's the scoop. So a lot of fans are asking, buying Vieira, does that mean we're not going after Tielemans? I've always said to Arsenal fans, don't think for a second that Xhaka's done at this club. Xhaka is 
Arteta's guy. Arte is the one to look at because of the injuries. If you look at Xhaka, the dude's been out when he had an injury this season, but generally he's been out because he's got a red card, not because he's been injured. He's a very durable player. And I think I think we all know that Arteta loves Xhaka. So this is going to be really interesting how it evolves. I don't think we were ever in the Basuma business. So Arsenal fans need to get over that one a little bit. Also, why would you invest in a player who has a sexual assault trial, um, trial, sexual assault claim against him? You don't know. And then sometimes some folks will say, well, why, why would Tottenham, Tottenham must have had assurances before investing that kind of money. Well, we don't know. We don't. But we've had plenty of opportunities to sign Basuma, but have not done so. Why? There's a reason for that. So this team is now truly emerging in the image of Arteta. It started last summer. There's no excuses any longer. There's none of that nonsense about inheriting a mess. This is his team now. And this season especially, no excuses. The biggest question is who can we attract? What carrot can we dangle? Europa League football is something. It's not Champions League football. But I'm not sitting here, like, you know, trying to peel my eyes out thinking, oh, we lost out on Basuma and Tottenham got Basuma. They got Basuma. And in the end, maybe Basuma went to Tottenham to spite Arsenal because Arsenal was the club that he wanted to join. But we never wanted him. Character matters to the manager. Saliba had to go to France and prove himself. Genduzi character issue. Ostracized, sent away. He doesn't suffer fools. Maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong. Can he manage bad characters or difficult characters? I'm not sure. The, I'm not sure if he can do that. But this is where we're at. This is his arsenal now. And there's no more excuses. And it's going to be a long, long season, you guys. I hope we make it further in the FA Cup this season because Arteta has blown it in the last two. Won it when he took half, over a half a season with Emery's team. Got to the semi-final of the League Cup. Haven't won that since Super Kev was playing, by the way. Haven't won a European trophy since Super Kev was playing. So now's the time. There's no reason why Arsenal shouldn't be throwing all their eggs at the Europa League basket. Let's be honest, the Premier League's going to be tough. It gets tougher year on year on year. Maybe Manchester United won't be ready next season. Who knows? New manager is coming into a structure that he's not used to. He's used to Ajax, which is built strong from the inside to the outside to the upside to the downside. He has always been able to operate freely and without concern or worry. Manchester United is a team and a club that is in total meltdown and have to be built bottom up. They're kind of where we were two years ago. Tottenham will get strong under Conte. They're showing their muscle in the transfer market. But let's be honest, who have they bought so far? Okay, Basuma, he's a good player. Perisic, is he going to make it in the Premier League? We don't know yet. And a backup goalkeeper for Lloris. They're tied to other players, but this measuring ourselves against that Tottenham stick, I guess it hurts because they finished above us for the last six seasons. If they hadn't, it would be a moot point. If United were making these moves, would it matter? Probably not. So the narrative can be ours to build, can be yours to form, however which way you want as an Arsenal fan. Here's what I don't like and what I'm seeing. People on Twitter who make out to be something and really maybe behind the scenes, do they think that? Trying to come across as uniters, whereas really they're dividers. Picking and prodding and digging people out for their opinion because it doesn't align with yours. Let's just separate this conversation. Abusers, move, stay dry. 
off. You're toxic. No one wants to hear what you have to say. You're a disgrace to football fandom and anyone who follows the Arsenal Football Club. Then there are these people on Twitter that make out like, where are all the people now? We haven't signed anyone and we've signed someone. Really? Why can't people express their feelings and emotions without somebody else getting upset? Twitter is not the barometer of what Arsenal fans are. And if people who posted that crap stepped out of the Twitter sphere and actually sat with fans, talked to fans, went to games or went to any other game in any other country where they aligned themselves and got to meet Arsenal fans through groups and clubs and all of that stuff would know that the majority of Arsenal fans want what is in the best interest of their club. And so these people that act like they're key informers are actually toxic themselves. Stop doing that. If you really wanted non-conflict and no likes and no retweets, you would suggest something different. We're all Arsenal fans. We all have our club. We all may have different opinions, and that's okay. As long as you're not abusive and bullying, let's talk. And so it's a long way to go this summer, guys, a long, long way to go. And at the core of it, everyone that comes into our show, everyone in our chat, they love their club. Now, Guna Russ may have very different opinions to Tammy or Mark, and... Name blocked may think very strongly about something. Swedish Guna and Lynn may think very strongly about different things. We get a lot of people in this group that also support Tottenham and Leicester and Manchester United and Chelsea and Spurs. You know, we like to be a show where you can come in and express yourself without any judgment whatsoever. And the one thing I would love to say, let's just hold any judgment. Let's call it opinion until the end of the transfer window. I was on, when I was talking to Harry and Tom and Dan the other day, I was talking about the Cronkies and if they were going to put their money where their mouths are. I watched the Stanley Cup game one the other night. Stan Cronkies, Colorado Avalanche win in overtime. Fantastic game. Amazing spirit in Colorado at their home stadium in Denver. He could actually have two teams here that have won a championship in the same season. I think the last time that happened was with the Patriots and the Boston um, NHL team. But it's down to them. Now, if they provide the funds, then the question is, how does our, how do Arteta and Adu utilize those funds? Let's get rid of the pawn, shall we? Because you can utilize those funds, as we've seen, in a very negative and destructive way. Hence, Arsenal have had to sell on players for nothing, give players away for free. You know, buy big players at premium optimum price, give them big contracts, and then give them away for nothing. You know, that is the part that has to stop the business side of things is where we need to improve as well. But this is the window where we show our true ambition, I think. This is the window where we say, okay, we may not have gone for it in January because we stuck to our guns and whatever our strategic objectives were in the summer, but now we're going for it based on what that strategy was. And when we continue to buy young, it worries me. I'm not poo-pooing who we bought you guys. But when we continue to buy young, there's two things that come into my mind. Um, number one is, does the manager, can the manager only manage young players? 
that don't have any issues? Is there a reason why our squad is balanced age-wise, younger versus older? You know? That's something that I've challenged Kev about too. I, I'm all for youth, but you've got to marry that youth. When Alan Hansen came out and said to when Manchester United ran with the kids, you know, he said, you can't win anything with kids. But those kids were surrounded by Eric Cantona. They were surrounded by Steve Bruce, Gary Pallister, Dennis Irwin, Brian McClare. Right? Are we this? Are we an investment company? You buy high, you sell low, you buy low, you sell high. This is why I called the show the other day the Nickel and Dime Club. Is that, is that who we are? Because this is the window for me where you go less young and you buy more experience. On that same show I told you I appeared on earlier this week, I was, okay, I'm just giving you examples. I'm not saying we can afford these players or these are the players, right? But when Zlatan left LA Galaxy, I said, why don't we go for him, even for one year? Get a player like that in the dressing room at the club, add the bravado. He's gone on to help Milan win a Scudetto. We've never replaced Olivier Giroud. I actually suggested the other day I'd bring him back for one season just to have him as a plan B. What can he offer in the dressing room? Dude's won it all. He's won the Champions League and the Europa League and the Scudetto since he's left Arsenal. So, for me, it's a case of, okay, Lewandowski probably doesn't want to play Europa League football. He wants another shot at the Champions League. Fine. Had we qualified for the Champions League, I would have said, go get him. That dude takes care of his body so well. He's an incredible athlete. He's very much like Cristiano. doesn't get the credit that Cristiano does for how he takes care of his body's body. He sleeps. He doesn't even sleep on his left side because it's the heart side. I mean, this is how deep thinking he is in how he, he takes care of everything. But sometimes we're really snobby about that kind of stuff. Really snobby about, you know, buying that kind of... Tiago Silva. Look what, I mean, he could have been great for us. Would have been perfect at that time. Went on to Chelsea, did bits. Won three trophy, major trophies. I'm all for youth and energy and potential and all of that stuff. But I would love for us to focus more on experience, which is why you guys, if this guy's on the table, go get him. He is Brazil's number nine without starting week in, week out with Manchester City. He has lived in the shadow of Aguero, yet has the stats that he has. He is a player that has been coached by the very best, they say, in modern-day football. He is the kind of guy that can come in and have an immediate impact at the Arsenal. No youth, no training, no nothing. Just come in, play, score win games. That's what he offers. Same with Zinchenko. I would be all out for him. How do we make that happen? Go get Zinchenko, go get Jesus, go get Tielemans. Then you can bring in a Hickey who could emerge as the, maybe the future left back. You know, I would even be going after a Tyler Adams at RB Leipzig. Go for people who've been playing the game who can bring immediate impact, no more potential. No more potential. 
I think Ostiaman, he's shown that he can handle more headstrong plays when he wants them out versus keeping them. I supported him wholeheartedly when um, Aubameyang left. 100%. But what does he do with a talent that can actually contribute to the team and how does he manage them to keep them as part of the fold and involved? How does he do that? I've not seen that yet. I've only seen adversity go out the door, not deal with it inside. So all I'm saying is I'm patient for the summer. To all of the so-called key informers who are telling fans, why are you, why are you screaming now? Are you doing this? Just shut up. Let people be who they want to be. Let them express themselves how they want. Because this is a pivotal time for our club. This is a pivotal moment for our growth, our emergence. Okay, so we say trust the process. So the process was 8th, 8th, 5th. Now the next process is what? 4th, a domestic trophy, winning Europa League. All of those things have to be in play. And in order to do those, you need more experience. You need better players. that or you buy guarantee you, no one knows if Nunes is going to work at Liverpool Torres was on fire at Liverpool went to Chelsea a dud uh, Shevchenko was on fire in Italy went to Chelsea a dud you know Sancho was on fire in Germany went into a system at Manchester United did not see the best of him at all Varane a superstar at Real Madrid it's all about timing, system, manager, moments. Would Tom Brady have won as many NFL championships without certain players? No. It's how you set up. And we can't set this team up to fail. We have to set this team up to succeed. But the process can only go on for so long, Swedish Guna. The process is ongoing. The process has to become... A thing. Process goes to progress. Progress goes to closing. You guys know I've been saying this for a little while now. You're relying on Saka and Emil Smith Rowe. You can't do that again next season. And look what's happening. Not nothing yet on a striker. Does he trust Eddie? Eddie's his guy. Why has he spent all this time convincing Eddie to stay? Maybe because he's his guy. Jack is staying, Partey is staying. So with someone like Fabio Vieira, he'll be patient. He's playing at the Arsenal. He's in the Premier League. Shh. Sit, sit, sit. I don't think we're going to see too much action in this transfer window, guys. Batten down the hatches. Is Patino going to emerge to the front team? Is Aziz going to be given a chance? Is Balogun going to go out on loan? There are lots of flags that aren't yellow or red yet that just lead me to believe that they don't think they need too much. You know what I mean? They don't think that they need a lot. So you invest again. You're 35 million in this player, though, is a lot of money. People would have said, oh, if, if he was an English player, people were bitching about Ben White's transfer fee but that's because of the british market now you're talking about let's be honest i'm sorry 70 percent of arsenal fans have not seen this guy play you just haven't but there are people who have and can maybe tell us a little bit more about what he might have to offer and kevin hatchard will do that for us next week um, let's see what you guys are saying in the chat. Throw out any questions to me for another 10 minutes. Wow. Who's this guy? You know, I like to put up all the crap comments as well as the good, as well as the good ones, guys. A female Lee Gunner. Wow. Who's this guy? Oh, do I sound like a guy? I look like a guy maybe to you, but welcome to the show. And thank you for your non-kindness. 
Um, we don't need Basuma so much. I think we like the idea of Basuma, and I don't think that he was ever on the cards for us, Lynn. You know? We are a big club doing small things. Manchester City are a smaller club doing great things, emerging into a bigger club. We're a big club doing nothing, and that's that's the truth. You know, you know, my red and yellow cards, I lost them in Cyprus, I think. So I can bring those out. Um, yeah, red card for sure. Got to find those. Maybe Vespa ate them. Yeah. I would say 85% hadn't heard of him before the other day. I would agree with you on that. Totally agree with you. Um, do you think Eddie's new contract is just to fill up that homegrown spot? God, I would hate to think that we would spend that kind of money just doing that, wouldn't you? Don't you? I actually think Eddie's a play that Mikel really believes in and has wanted at the club and has done a lot of things to keep him there. And something tells me he thinks he could be the guy next season, and that worries me because I think he can be the guy for a few games, but I don't think he can be the guy for every game. Hence why Jesus will be the guy. Eddie, at 100 grand a week, though, it's kind of a lot of money to be a deputy. Now, he's not going to play 4 4 2, right? I don't think so. Um, if he was going to do that, I'd, ra I'd rather he bought Jonathan uh, David. Whew. God, he can play as a two, as a. That's the kind of player I would like to buy up front, you know? Um. Let's see what else you guys have for me here before. I've got a, an announcement to make too, by the way. Got some exciting stuff happening after this show. Uh, so I did a pre-record um, earlier this week with uh, Martin Bengston, who wrote In the Shadow of San Siro, which is an incredible football autobiography of a young player who went from Sweden to Inter Milan years ago and literally just the lights and the bright lights of M Milan and the San Siro ate him up to the point where he tried to take his own life and talking of mental health issues and mental health and sports and football, uh, an amazing interview that we will release um, in the next 10 days leading up to the release of Tiger's film on the 1st of July. So look out for that. That's going to be incredible. And after this show, um, what, Spammer's back? Just focused on you guys today. Oh, yeah, there they are. Maybe we should subscribe to that one day, see what it's all about. Um, after this show, I'm doing an interview with an ex-Arsenal player who has teamed up with the LA Galaxy goalkeeper, Jonathan Bond, doing um, Access Pro Soccer Camps here in the US. It's brilliant the way they're helping young kids. And that player is Callum Chambers. So I will be talking to Callum Chambers and I think I have a confession to make to him, don't I? Considering how against him playing at the Arsenal I have been over the last two years. I have a confession to make. Hello, my name's Sophie Nicolau, and I am a Callum Chambers apologist. But it's going to be interesting to talk to him in terms of his experience and the stuff that he's done. So you want to look out for that. Um, hopefully he hasn't done the same research on me as I have done on him. Yeah. Where's that humble pie when you need it? The good news is Kev will be with me too. So, you know, it'll be like an inside the dressing room type interview too, where we talk about football and all of that stuff. We'll ask him some Arsenal questions, of course. Yep, Newman, more humble pie for me. Um, yeah, kind of awkward. I know. But we'll get through it. Right. Um, interesting episode. Summer series, episode five in the books. Episode six will be with Jonathan Bond and Callum Chambers. That's a pre-record that will go out 
next week. We have a ton of good stuff coming to you next week as well. Also, at the same time, just trying to take a little bit of a breather. There's going to be plenty of time to talk football with the Women's Euros coming up and with the Arsenal uh, Summer Tour coming up as well. Um, so just wanted to hop on tonight and have a bit of a freestyle conversation um, with you guys. The schedule is out. What else is there to say about the schedule? January looks tough. Uh, December looks, eh, you know, whatever. I would say our first six up until United, all winnable games, but will we? I don't know. Um, and May is kind of kind to us as well. We'll be playing Kev's teams, X teams, uh, Everton and Nottingham Forest, of course. So we'll see how it shakes out. But for me, initially, I think January looks like the toughest month. And May is doable. And um, where we usually falter in November, we've got Chelsea and Wolves. You know, October is going to be the toughest month of all, I think. So let's see what happens. Um, we'll be, there'll be plenty of, of time for us to, to talk about it. Yeah, April and October are tough for sure. Hope you guys are well. Uh, I've missed you uh, like crazy. I will let you know how it goes. Catch the replay for sure. Um, night all, Mr. Gunnar Russ. I'll let you know. I like Chambers. Yeah, I know. I've, I've got to speak my truth. I'm going to have to tell him. I'm going to have to tell him, right? I think I'm going to have to tell him. How am I going to tell him? I know what. I'll lead in with the FA Cup goal, the Burnley goal. You know, the one where he claimed like it was Cristiano Ronaldo-esque. And then, then I will confess and tell Callum everything. How about that? Yeah? Cool. Okay. Um, thank you, Newman. I knew I could rely on you. Yeah, hit the like button as well, please. 240 of you in live chat this fine Friday. I know that a lot of you will be listening on iTunes and Spotify and Acast and on replay. It's the summer season, so I know that a lot of you are out partying, enjoying yourselves, having a good time. You catch up on shows when you can. Just remember, this is the original summer series. We started this uh, six weeks ago. We've had some great guests. You can check the playlist on the show uh, we bring a lot of fun to you. And by the way, I will be asking Callum what his favorite film, TV show, city, drink, athlete, and all sorts are as well. All right. That's it for today. I love you guys. You take care. Have a great weekend. Keep out. Keep your ear out on the YouTube channel and also on the community page for more info. Don't miss out our Fabio Vieira special next week and as those players sign on the dotted line we will be here Sagabo. mind the gap between the train and the platform please stand clear of the discussion doors the next stop is Highbury Squad. <laughs>